Hi, my name is Wendy Cope, and today we're going to talk about how to transform your presentations into something special, into something that is going to entertain and inform your audience, as well as probably get you a little higher grade. But first, let's talk about how you typically put together presentations. All right, so let's say you have a project due in biology about the types of flora. So first, you're going to grab a picture. Oh, that's nice and it's super colorful and you know that that's going to make a big impact because of all the color in it and it also fits your project and then we're going to grab a text box ooh let's use word art because we need our title to be big and bold and beautiful and we're going to name this slide oh gotta fix that we're going to name this slide types of flora beautiful Oh, let's use a, ooh, let's transform it with this beautiful tool and stretch it out to make it nice. And of course, we need to grab some information from the web so that we can add some content. So now we're going to grab types of flora. And of course, we're going to go to Wikipedia because it's the first thing that pops up. And then we're going to go down here to flora classifications because that's the type of flora. We're going to just copy it and we're going to paste it directly into our slide. We're going to make a text box and we're going to, oops, we're going to grab a text box and include the information that we found on the wonderful web without changing anything. And then, of course, that doesn't all fit on the slide, so we are going to adjust it, and we are going to highlight it and create it, make it white so it's a little easier. Oh, and bold. Boy, that's fantastic, isn't it? If that's typical of your presentations, I just beg of you, I implore you, please just stop it. You're doing a huge disservice to your audience, a world of hurt to PowerPoint and to presentations in general. Presentations like that just bore your audience. First of all, they can't read it and they get frustrated and they tune you out. If you want a fresh approach, you really do need to ponder the assignment. Assignments are designed by your teachers to help you learn, not just have you repeat or copy what's out there on the net. So presentations should really reflect your learning. It should be processed and it should be something that comes out of you naturally. When you put together a presentation, I'd like you to think about how it can be informative, but also entertaining, and this is probably something new, elegant. So a clean look. So how are you going to do that? Well, first of all, you've got to find your passion. How can you turn any assignment toward your interest? If you're interested in music, can you find a musical edge or a way to turn your topic so that it does focus on music? For example, if you're looking at a different time period in social studies, if you can focus on the music of that time period, that's going to be able to turn it towards your interest. That connection to your interest is called your entry point. That's the perspective that you plan to spin your assignment, and it should really direct your research. So once you have your research done, make sure you learn your content, that you've got it down cold. If you're really interested in it, then you're going to learn it easily, and that's why we want you to help you find your passion. And one way to learn it is to streamline your message. Boil any quotes that you've got down to their simplest nuggets. Learn key statistics. Make sure that everything that you include on the slide is going to help you move forward into your discussion about it. Now, to deliver it to your audience, predict what they already know. And so be able to use that to build on new knowledge. Teachers and educators call that building on prior knowledge. So anytime you're able to hook your audience into something that they've got reference for, it becomes a lot more easy for them to learn new information. And especially what's important is to include what surprises you. People don't want a rehashing of what they already know. They see that as a waste of time. Teach them something new or even present a familiar concept with a new perspective. Maybe even talking about like comparing things. Like for example, saying that a blue whale is the size of a football field. That is a new perspective and it brings a little bit more interest because it's something people can relate to. 
So once you've got your information together, think about simplifying your slides. The more information you just slop on a slide, the less people pay attention. If you think about the flora slide that we put together, there was so much jammed on it in those little bullet points, it was really hard to read. But, you know, even if they can read it, your audience reads faster than you can talk. If all you're doing is reading to them, what do they really need you for? They're going to stop reading, they're going to tune out, and you've lost their attention. The best way to engage your audience is through one powerful image, preferably one that you've found through Creative Commons. And remember, that's something that we've talked about before, or if you haven't heard the Creative Commons talk from me, then of course we're going to be talking about it and how to easily search for those items. Because we want to make sure that we give credit where credit is due. If you do a Google Internet search, a Google image search, you may or may not have permission to use that picture. But when you use a picture, find some emotional quality. Even take your own shots. You know, you've got a phone on your camera. That's going to be something easy for you to do. You've got the powerful image, but you also need a key phrase. That is going to keep your audience engaged but listening. Notice I don't even have a title for this slide. It's just the key information. Also, less information on your slide means that you have less to spell check. So even more importantly, see where you can play in your presentation. It may be with your image, something maybe quirky that can spark some discussion or a perspective that you may or may not be able to convey otherwise. In other words, just be creative. Even using the image tools on PowerPoint, like I did here, you can transform the emotional quality of a picture into something else. I can even see this transformation being used for something sinister, something a little spooky and a little creepy. There's something creepy sometimes about circuses. Well, when you get all your presentation stuff together, think about how you're going to present. You hear this all the time, but your persona when you present should be natural. Just louder and a little bit more energetic. You need to be heard, but you also need to keep your audience's attention. And maintaining a sense of humor is important too. If you mess up, it's not the end of the world. Your audience is with you. Just laugh and move on. You find places to be funny too, if it's appropriate. Any kind of emotion that you can put in your presentation means that you care and it's going to get your audience on your side. So when you've got it all together, review it. Look over it, make sure it covers all your bases. In fact, check it against your rubric for your assignment to make sure that you are going to get the highest grade possible, that you have taken care of all the requirements for the assignment. Also, look, have somebody else look over the presentation. Have them look at the rubric. Have them check over it to make sure that you have taken care of business. If they can get the general idea, even without your talk, you're on the right track. And if they want to know more and they want you to tell them about something, that's even better. Now it's time to practice. Even if you have note cards, make sure you're familiar enough with your information to go it alone if you need to. Also, using the presentation mode on PowerPoint, it can help to keep the information readily at hand. That is, unless you're at the smart board. Find ways to connect to your audience. We've already talked about humor, but putting energy into your voice can even kind of fake a sense of confidence. Exuding that confidence, even if it's fake, can go a long way with getting your audience in your corner. Most important is that connection with eye contact. No, really. Eye contact with your audience increases their attention. A lot of times when people are presenting, they try to read everything off the slide and everybody disengages. But the more you have eye contact with your audience, that's going to increase their attention, lessening their boredom. And even teachers, if you're not engaging with your teachers, they get bored too. And it's something that you might want to consider, especially if you're looking at higher grades. So remember our slide from before? Well, here's how I've transferred it using this presentation Zen style. It's clear, it's concise, and we've added value to the image by changing the effect that I've used. I've done the picture in, power, in the PowerPoint, the slide, the tools. Notice that I put a bar at the bottom, so that makes the phrase that I've got there, it makes it very easy to read. 
also look at the font. Um, I've made it a 60 point font and you can read it from the back of the room. It's really easy. The slide is informational, it's visually entertaining, and it's elegant. I can talk about the types of the flora without you having to read and tuning out. So in your next presentation, give this approach a try. You're going to learn more and you're going to be on your way towards becoming a better presenter with some higher grades. Thanks for listening.